Hello, this is Vivica Williams, and you're watching Head to Head. Recently, I had an opportunity to sit down and speak with Hugh Mungarelli, the head of the EU delegation to Ukraine. We spoke about Russian misinformation, the process of and progress of reforms in Ukraine, and what we can look forward to in 2018. Let's have a listen. Thank you so much for meeting with me today to talk about some of the issues that are going on with the EU and with uh, Russia and Ukraine. Well, it's a pleasure to be uh, invited for this interview, as usual. Well, and I know recently you wrote uh, that uh, Russia is manipulating the e EU's view of Ukraine. So what are some of the things that can be done to counter this? We all know that uh, Russia is uh, conducting, carrying out a very effective uh, disinformation campaign about Ukraine. This happened through uh, Russian channels in Ukraine itself, but uh, this has an impact as well in uh, the European Union. Uh, the EU reacted uh, in 2015 with uh, the creation in uh, the EU institution of a strategic communication uh, uh, platform, task force, uh, which uh, every week basically is analyzing the views uh, and the fake information uh, expressed by Russia uh, on all neighboring countries, including Ukraine. There is a website for this uh, uh, Stratcom uh, task force. Uh, there is a weekly uh, newsletter as well. And we uh, all uh, benefit from this uh, information and analysis to uh, uh, become aware of the fact that uh, uh, reading uh, and listening to uh, Russian uh, TV channel or newspapers, we get a totally distorted view of Ukraine, image of Ukraine. And therefore, we have to counter this uh, propaganda to ensure that the citizens of these countries and the citizens in uh, Western Europe as well get uh, a real information about uh, uh, the state of this country, uh, the difficulties facing the country, the many assets that this country has, well, basically can get the real information to make up uh, their mind about uh, this country. And so how effective has this been, in your opinion? Because if you're thinking that there's still a lot of distortion. It is extremely effective. Uh, many, many uh, uh, Western European citizens have a totally distorted image of uh, Ukraine. And this is due, to a large extent, to this Russian uh, uh, propaganda campaign. So we have, once again, to put in place uh, the necessary means to counter this disinformation because it is uh, clear that in a democracy, citizens have to be informed in a, in a serious way. And you talked about this uh, communication platform that tries to give uh, the alternative view or point out mainly from, it seems, from Russian sources. But how effective has this been for uh, organizations and countries to, to I see I think this? that many people use uh, the work of this uh, uh, platform of this uh, task force. Uh, again, it was created uh, in 2015, but uh, the importance of the work of this task force is increasing without any doubt, and we know that uh, more and more people benefit from the work of this uh, STRATCOM uh, task force. And also for uh, countries in the EU, it's got to be a very difficult situation with trying to have manage relationships with uh, Russia, but at the same time uh, with Ukraine and with other Eastern Partnership countries. Well, the EU position is clear. Uh, we uh, support uh, the uh, independence, sovereignty, and uh, territorial integrity of uh, countries like uh, Moldova, Georgia, and Ukraine. We condemn uh, the Russian aggressions against uh, uh, these countries, and uh, we want to make sure that uh, uh, political solutions uh, are uh, found so that uh, this country can enjoy from their sovereignty and can uh, develop economically and at the same time become uh, open and democratic societies. 
And how do you see uh, the balance being? How are you see countries trying to balance their relationship with Ukraine economically and politically, and as well as with Russia? Our objective, once again, is to get uh, uh, a an, uh, sovereign, independent uh, Ukraine, which is able to carry out uh, a transition towards an open and uh, democratic society based on a social market economy. At the same time, uh, Russia is uh, a big neighbor of the EU, and we have uh, to do everything possible to cooperate uh, with uh, the Russians where we have a common interest. And therefore, uh, you are right, you have to, we have to find the right balance uh, between uh, defending Ukraine, uh, Georgia, Moldova, and at the same time, maintaining a dialogue with Russia. And you said part of this is helping Ukraine uh, make sure it works within the market economy. This has been very useful with the EU Free Trade Association. So what other types of work is the EU doing, say, for specifically with civil society and, and aiding them in this transition? We are uh, assisting the reform process in most sectors of the political, social and economic life. In the political area, we assist with the restructuring of uh, the state apparatus. We have a very ambitious uh, uh, public administration reform program. We are uh, backing the decentralization process, which is in Ukraine a, a success, thanks to the decentralization process initiated three years ago. Today, uh, the public services which are offered to the citizen in the region is of a far better quality than uh, uh, anything uh, was offered to these people a few, few years ago. We are as well uh, trying to uh, support uh, all efforts to uh, enforce the rule of law in this country. This is why we support the reform of uh, the judiciary the reform of the law enforcement agencies, that we support uh, all those who uh, try to uh, fight uh, corruption. We try as well to boost the civil society, which is exceptional in Ukraine. We are working to uh, maintain uh, and develop independent media. Uh, economically, it's clear that we want to uh, help uh, restructure the energy sector. We try as well to uh, create uh, conditions uh, favorable to economic growth through uh, uh, deregulation, through uh, uh, putting in place uh, business regional centers uh, uh, for uh, small and medium companies. We would like as well to support uh, the privatization process and the restructuring of state-owned companies. These uh, reforms up to now have not been able to take off, but we hope that uh, with the strong will of uh, Prime Minister Groisman, it will be possible in the next few weeks to uh, really do something uh, important in this area. We need as well to help uh, uh, Minister Suprun to implement the reform of the healthcare system. The same applies to the reform of the pension system. So as you can see, there are many, many areas where uh, Ukraine is making good progress in terms of uh, reform. And on our side, with our limited means, we try to be helpful in uh, sharing our experience, basically, and in uh, supporting the reformers wherever they are. Mm -hmm. And is speaking of this, these amazing reforms that are going on, and there are some, as you said, that haven't been so successful. We're looking to, to push forward. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, anti-corruption reforms in general. Uh, so what's the East EU's uh, position on this and how they've been going? This is a, a sector where uh, the reform is particularly important because uh, without progress in this area, it will be difficult to make any progress in many other areas. Uh, to give you an example, it will be difficult to improve the economic situation if we don't improve uh, the protection of property rights for investors. It will be difficult uh, to uh, improve uh, the living condition of the uh, Ukrainian uh, citizens if we don't manage to reduce the corruption which exists in the health sector. So 
progress in this area will condition progress in many other sectors, and therefore it is particularly important. A lot has been done over the last three years. New laws have been adopted, new institutions have been uh, set up, but now we have to uh, strengthen these institutions, build their capacity, make sure that they do not, uh, uh, they do not uh, face uh, difficulties with other law enforcement agencies, and we have obviously to move ahead with uh, the uh, setting up, uh, uh, without any delay, of an anti-corruption court, Uh, according to uh, uh, in full uh, compliance with the recommendation of the Venice Commission. The President has already put forward a draft. This is a, a welcome step in the right direction. We have a few concerns uh, regarding this draft that we have shared with our Ukrainian partners. And now we hope that uh, it will be possible in the relevant uh, Verovna Rada committees to amend Uh, the president uh, uh, draft law so that it fully uh, complies with the Venice Commission recommendation and in the end a law uh, a progress in the fight against uh, corruption. Okay. And so then what are you seeing as some of the next uh, steps to keep this momentum going? What are you hoping to see in the, this year? Alors, in the field against corruption, we hope that uh, this new court will be put in place and will start uh, working. This would be uh, very important. We would like as well to see the removal on uh, the obligation made to anti-corruption activists to declare their assets. Uh, it's clear that uh, anti-corruption activists cannot be subjected to the same obligation than uh, 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 civil servants. Uh, we would like as well to see uh, a strengthening, a reinforcement of the uh, recently created uh, anti-corruption uh, bodies. We would like as well uh, to see the, uh, a serious uh, verification of uh, the e-declaration, uh, which were uh, basically established now almost one year ago, and where we, we have not made uh, much progress. It would be necessary for the national agency uh, on the prevention of corruption to really be able to verify this, uh, this declaration. And more generally, it would be useful to have a reform of uh, the law enforcement agencies. We are working with uh, uh, the Interior Minister on the, the reform of the police. We have put forward as well uh, some recommendations for uh, the reform of uh, SBU. And we have as well uh, a roadmap for, uh, proposed a roadmap for the reform of the Prosecutor General Office. So as you can see, there is a lot to do. But with uh, uh, the right political will on the Ukrainian side and our, uh, uh, the mobilization of our expertise on our side, I think that we could make good progress this year. Okay. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to see you.